Skeptics. The World Skeptics Congress, Paranormal, Supernatural, Fringe Science, Pseudoscience and How It Really Is. Berlin welcomes you. The next presentation is um, a kind of a similar story in many ways. If um, someone had come to me, well then let me ask you all, what if someone told you we're going to give an award tonight, yes, we're a major skeptical group, we're going to give an award tonight to someone who is trained in acupuncture, also trained in autogenic training, also trained in herbalism, also in home homeopathy, also in uh, massage therapy. Well, that's almost okay. Although I, I, the recent evidence is no, actually, you'd be surprised or maybe not surprised to hear that there's absolutely no evidence to support any uh, other than the placebo effect for massage therapy. Uh, anyway, and then uh, spinal manipulation. This someone's trained in all that. Also, someone whose first uh, major job was uh, as a physician in a home homeopathic hospital. Uh, what would you think? <laughs> it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, in fact. That is, a, that is some of the credentials, fortunately not all, of the gentleman who we're going to give the next award to. Uh, and like uh, Simon Singh, he also has suffered a lot as a result of some courageous skepticism on his part. But this man, in fact, fits all the criteria, all the uh, experience that I just told you. But in addition, he grew out of that. He uh, was a very uh, sincere uh, person in believing in the uh, role of evidence. And he spent a lot of time examining all the evidence. By the way, most of his training was in Germany. He was had to held the first position uh, in complementary medicine. And that was at the University of Exeter in England, where he retired. Uh, well, he went to somewhere else, actually, before that. But he also retired in England, I think he's a British citizen now, in 2011. Now his retirement wasn't all voluntarily. Uh, he crossed uh, Prince Charles and uh, he was, uh, because he had the temerity after he was on a committee, uh, I think it was called the uh, Small World Report that was put out in 2005. And this is commissioned by Prince Charles, who is uh, apparently no friend of the skeptical movement. Uh, I don't anticipate we're going to give him an award soon. But anyway, uh, the report claimed that uh, CAM was effective and, uh, and was cost effective as well. Uh, Ernst had been actually one of the, supposedly one of the co-authors of it, but as soon as he saw what they were going to put out, he uh, uh, removed, had his name removed from it, and he called the report complete rubbish because it really didn't uh, base its conclusions on any real evidence. And uh, as a result, he got into a lot of trouble, and um, uh, Prince Charles' secretary tried to get him uh, uh, I don't know how all the circumstances of it, but as a result, he apparently retired two years earlier than he would have ordinarily retired. Um, with Simon Singh, they co-authored this wonderful book in 2008 on trick or treatment. And um, we could say a lot of other things about him, but uh, I think it's enough to say he, he pub he's published at least 700 papers in professional journals. Uh, on evaluating CAM and uh, treatments of that kind. And uh, the conclusion basically is that uh, in 95% of the, of, of the CAM cases, of CAM medicine, stuff like that, 95% of what's called CAM medicine uh, has either no basis at all, in fact, or what evidence there is shows it doesn't work. And uh, I guess there are some possibility that maybe for some small 5% there might be something there. Um, 
I like his conclusion uh, that he wrote with Simon Singh, uh, a statement note that he gave to reporters in, during an interview, um, and that was uh, for, there is no such thing as alternative medicine. There is either medicine that is effective or not, medicine that is safe or not. And I think that sums it all up in many ways. But anyways, uh, the recipient of this next award, uh, and I think it's a nice uh, compliment because they were co-authors and stuff like that, is uh, Edzard Ernst. I'm very honored. I'm, I'm not going to talk about um, Prince Charles and I, <laughs> partly because I still hope I, I get a knighthood one of, one of these days. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to uh, carry on where Simon finished off, and I'm going to continue the, the story a little bit about chiropractic and, and what happened in England uh, after the libel case. I'm, I'm going to entitle this After the Storm. And this title is nicked from my good friends, the chiropractors. Um, this is the man who was heading the uh, British Chiropractic Association and therefore took the decision to sue Simon. He, after the storm, published an article based on a lecture which he gave in Australia, which he called, after the storm, uh, what have we learned? In that, he said, the BCA began one of the darkest periods in its history, one that was ultimately to cost its financially, reputationally, and politically. And by Jove, he's right. You've heard about this um, from Simon. Uh, the BCA sued him. Simon had to pay out in legal fees 200,000 uh, pounds. Um, the BCA attracted a lot of public criticism, and they lost the case. They had to pay their own legal fees and uh, a large proportion of Simon's legal fees. But what else happened after that? You've heard about the 700 complaints to the General Chiropractic Council, and the General Chiropractic Council almost went bust uh, over these uh, um, uh, cases. Um, they had a vote of no confidence about, uh, from their own members. Uh, the GCC declared that subluxation, which is the basis of their trade, is a historical obsolete concept, which is quite a revolution uh, for chiropractors, I'm sure. The Nightingale Collaboration was founded, that is an organization in Britain which objects to false claims being made in healthcare, um, particularly in alternative medicine. And as we just heard, we will have a change in libel law in England. But what else happened? This is my team around the time when um, the BC, uh, BCA tried to sue Simon, um, and I directed my team, who had previously considered chiropractic as one of the subjects, but not as the main subject, I directed my team uh, towards chiropractic, heavily so. We published this, this, and this. <laughs> uh, 23 articles in just five years in the peer-reviewed literature on chiropractic. 
critical assessment of what chiropractic is about. And this is what it roughly shows you. I'm not going to go into every single detail. Chiropractic is not effective for sports injuries, for gastrointestinal problems, um, for disease prevention, for fibromyalgia, for asthma, for otitis, for infant colic, for any other pediatric condition, for carpal tunnel syndrome, or for hypertension. The studies funded by ANCAM in, in America, the NIH Office for Alternative Medicine, uh, are deeply flawed. Uh, chiropractic uh, trials fail to mention adverse effects. Therefore, investigators are in violation of very basic ethical standards. Uh, chiropractic is likely uh, to be causally associated with strokes. Chiropractic uh, associations and chiropractors continue to make bogus claims worldwide. Chiropractic uh, has caused numerous deaths. <coughs> this particular article uh, I will mention at the end led to a lot of hate mail uh, in my inbox. So, here is again uh, Richard Brown, who asks, what have we learned? So what have they learned? <laughs> in his published article, which is worth reading in full, it's a long, long article, and I can take just a few quotes out. He says, Following a robust legal defense mounted by the BCA on behalf of its members, over 91% of the allegations against chiropractors were dismissed as being unproven. He also says, if we ignore the need for research and partnership with others in mainstream healthcare and fail to challenge the charismatic evangelists among us, chiropractic will remain on the periphery. There one thinks there's a, a ray of sunshine coming through. Uh, but I just highlight the reason they don't want to remain on the periphery, otherwise they don't seem to care whether their treatments work or not. Uh, another quote, for us to move forward as a respected profession, we need that acceptance from mainstream healthcare. What about demonstrating that they do more good than harm? Uh, there's nothing in his speech, there's nothing in, in, in his publication. So, what have they learned? What they did do, they, they hired this man, um, uh, this is Gerd Bonford. I met him in 2000 at a conference in San Francisco. And we almost ended up fist fighting. <laughs> he he has, has an alarming veneer of scientific know-how, and they hired this man, uh, together with other chiropractors, uh, to do a report, which is now called the Bonford Report, uh, on the evidence of chiropractic. It's called a systematic review. I put systematic in inverted commas because it's everything other than a systematic review. Here is what Bonford says about some of the bogus treatments that the BCA was happily promoting. And you can see that they can consider, for instance, uh, um, bed wetting as uh, favorable. According to, to uh, Bonford, the, the evidence that chiropractic treatments uh, prevent bed wetting of children is favorable. That is utter bullshit. The Bonford report was not just on chiropractic, but was on all manual therapies, including massage therapy, etc., etc. It was not independent. It was commissioned by the General Chiropractic Council. It was written and researched by chiropractors. Uh, but most crucially, it has no evaluation of the primary, uh, uh, of, of the quality of the primary data in it. A systematic review is not a systematic review if it doesn't do that. Uh, in my view, and in, in the view of anybody who is capable of thinking critically, this is an attempt of a whitewash. So what have we learned? 
not a lot, as I said, but a lot has changed, and some of what has changed we have heard already. The importance of that particular libel case goes way beyond chiropractic. It has changed, it is, it's now a fact that it is changing English libel law. So we heard about that, but from my perspective as a researcher of alternative medicine, uh, equally important is that it has changed the public awareness of quackery in much more general terms. There's a different climate in alternative medicine. People who make bogus claims know or have to fear for the first time in, in the history of quackery, probably, that they can't get away with it. So after the storm, is it after the storm? I seriously wonder. Um, recently I've published an article entitled Death After Chiropractic. I promised to come back to that. Uh, it wasn't very well received by chiropractors. <laughs> My inbox was full of hate mail. It usually is quite full of hate mail, but th that, that was a particularly full uh, moment. And one American chiropractor wrote to me explaining that I was an idiot, that I was paid by the pharmaceutical industry, that I, I, I don't understand chiropractic, and I should do uh, s something else other than being a researcher. He concluded, with a short sentence, God will judge you. <laughs> and I think as long as God is on their side, we will have a continuous storm. Thank you. The Real Skeptics Congress, Paranormal, Supernatural, Fringe Science, Pseudoscience, and How It Really Is. We're skeptically interrogating you.